Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra and the How Does Your Garden Grow Hop. April is National Garden Month, so we are sharing creations that are in full bloom. We hope you find each project as beautiful as the next. At the top of the description box, you will find the link to the next person in the lineup. You can also use the hashtag Garden of Crafts to find all of the videos in this hop. I hope you take the time to watch all hop videos because we love your comments and thumbs up. If you aren't already a subscriber, I hope you consider subscribing and click on that little bell so you won't miss any of my uploads. Some of us might be offering prizes on our channel, so be sure to pay attention for details. Please check out my description box for more information. For my channel prize, I'll be giving away a jar of Nouveau embellishment mousse and a mystery stencil. To enter to win, leave me a comment telling me where you're from and what your favorite technique is to use in card making. For my card today, I'm making a mini slimline card using the Friendship Blooms Bundle from Pink Fresh Studios. This stamp set has some beautiful floral and leaf images, along with some great friendship sentiments. The bundle comes with matching dies and five layering stencils. Now I'm gonna be using some Bristol Smooth paper that I've trimmed down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place the first stencil on top of my paper and tape it down using some mint tape. Now I'll be using a combination of some Distress Oxide inks and some of my Distress Mini ink cubes here in the different yellow and green colors. Since this is the largest part of the flower, I want it to be my lightest yellow shade. So I'm using Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide ink first and I'm using a life-changing blender brush to apply the ink through the stencil. Now that I'm finished blending stencil number one, I'm gonna clean off my work surface and wipe off my brush using my microfiber cloth. Now for stencil number two, I'm using mustard seed Distress Oxide ink and I'm making sure that I line up the edges of my panel there with the corners that are on the stencil and making sure that it's in the right place on the front side. So here I'm just adding that ink which is a slightly darker shade of yellow than the Squeeze Lemonade. And then for the next stencil I'll be using a shade that's just a little bit darker than this, Fossilized Amber. Now I switched to a smaller size Picket Fence Life Changing Blender Brush because the openings on this stencil are a lot smaller so it's really kind of showing the fine detail of each of these flowers and it's really pretty and it makes this super easy to color. So now we're going to move on to adding the inks for the leaves. For stencil number four, I'm using Bundled Sage, one of my little mini ink cubes. And I do need to buy this in the bigger Distress Oxide because I really like this color. And as you can see, I'm struggling to get some ink out. So I either need to buy a reinker or get a, a bigger ink pad. But the lighter shade goes on first. And then after I apply this Bundled Sage, I'll be putting on stencil number five and adding in the Rustic Wilderness for the darker shade of green. These stencils make it so easy to color these flowers and I think they're pretty just like they are. But now that I have colored all of the flowers and leaves, I'm going to stamp the outline images on top using my Misty Stamping platform. And because these stamps are brand new, I'm just running my hands across it to help remove some of the stickiness. I have to carefully line up each stamp and I've decided to use some VersaFine Claire pigment ink in a gray color called Morning Mist. Now I'm not able to fit all of the stamps on the images and stamp them at the same time because they're too close together. So I have to do a few at a time, but I'm just adding a couple of coats just to make sure I have a really good impression. Now 
After stamping all of the outline stamps, I'm going to be using the dies to cut out all of the images using my Big Shot die cutting machine. And again, because some of these images are kind of close to each other, I won't be able to cut all of them out at the same time. I'll have to run it through my Big Shot several times. For my background, I'm using the stencil that came in the Pink and Main Hooray Crafty Courtyard Kit. I thought it kind of looked like a garden trellis, which is perfect for this hop. I've sprayed some pixie spray on the back, which is a low tack adhesive. Now, originally I had planned on making a regular slimline card. So at this point, you see me attach the stencil to a three and a half by eight and a half inch panel, which is not a mini slimline, but this is a piece of Nina Solar White 110 pound heavyweight cardstock. And now I'm using my spatula and my scraper to apply some Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone. I'm just going to set this aside to dry. In the meantime, I'm taking a scrap piece of basic gray cardstock that I've placed in my Misty stamping platform and I'm rubbing my anti-static powder bag across the top part so I can stamp and heat emboss my sentiment. I chose the Friends Make Happiness Bloom stamp and I'm applying several coats of clear Versamark ink to it and then I'm adding some white embossing powder. I'm using a paintbrush to brush away some of those stray flakes and then I'll be applying my heat tool. Now, and because my background has iridescent or holographic glitter in it, I wanted my sentiment to match it. So I decided to stamp it again with some more Versamark ink and then add some holographic embossing powder on top for the second coat. Now, if I hadn't used the white embossing powder first, I don't think you'd be able to read the sentiment. So this was the only way I could come up with to make it be shiny and holographic like the background, but also legible. Now, after letting this cool down after heat setting it, I'm going to use this torn edge rectangle die and run this through my die cutting machine. Now that my background is dry, I placed all of my flowers and leaves on top to try to figure out placement. And once I was happy with it, I decided to take a piece of Glad Press and Seal to keep all of the pieces all together while I trimmed down my background. My original plan was to take the stencil and apply more glimmer paste to cover the rest of the slimline panel. But then once I had the flowers placed on the part that was already done, I kind of liked it on that smaller piece. So I decided to trim it down and make it a mini slimline instead. Now I trimmed off two inches of my slimline card base to make it be a three and a half by six inch panel. And to bring out the gray outline in the flowers, I trimmed down a piece of basic gray to be one eighth of an inch smaller than the base. And then I trim my panel down to be three and a quarter by five and three quarter inches. I glued all of the pieces down using some Nouveau Deluxe liquid adhesive. This is my favorite glue because it gives me just enough time to kind of scoot things where I want it. And now for the flowers, I added some liquid glue underneath all of the overlapping pieces first. And then I added more glue to the back so that I could attach it to the panel. Now for my sentiment, I'm adding a piece of foam underneath to give it some dimension and I'm adding some liquid glue just to help it stick a little bit to that panel. 
Now to finish this card off, I'm adding some yellow and white glitter enamel dots from that same Pink and Main Hooray Crafty Courtyard kit. And here is my finished card. I think it turned out really pretty. Those stencils make this so easy to make and I just love the results. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and please let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, tell me where you're from and what technique you like to use most for card making so that you can enter the drawing for the giveaway. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now to find the next video on the hop, check the description box below. For more card making inspiration, check out my Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest pages, or you can visit my website at cardsbykindred.com. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day.